Hi, in this video I cover how to use the SKU function in Excel and how it can relate to a normal distribution. So what SKU does is it denotes or indicates symmetry or asymmetry. So we're looking at symmetry, whether or not a, a bar chart is equal on both sides or, or is it more weighted to one side or to the other. So it could be positive, negative, or zero. When it's positive, we have the tails more aligned to the right. So there's a lot of the height of the bars over on the left side and then you can see there's, there's lower heights for the tails on the right side of a chart. That's positive. Negative is just the inverse of that when you think about it. You have the heights of the bars on the right side, bulk of them, and then you have some heights that are lower on the left side. So that's a negative um, skew. And then you have zero, where it's kind of equal out. It's, it's pretty much symmetrical. So skewness it basically shows where and how uh, how far a distribution deviates from the normal. You don't hear skewness used a lot in the popular press, right? You, you hear what's the mean, what's the median, but it is used a lot probably in investing in financial applications when they talk about the skew of the data. And there's models out there that use it to make decisions about forecasting. But of course, it's used in statistical analysis and probably data science. This is going to cover using the skew function, and it's actually a fairly easy function to use. So first, I'm going to create, let's create a positive skew. So we're going to create a skew that has most of the height of the bars onto the left, and then it tapers out onto the right. So it's going to be a positively skewed chart. So we're going to do rand. We'll create a rand between function. and these values will be 10 to 29. Close parentheses, press enter. I'm going to bring this value down a couple cells here. And then when I get to here, it'll be ran between, we'll make this 40 to 60. Close parentheses, press enter. Let's bring this over here. All right, and I'm going to go back up, control home, go back up here. What's my skew? Let's see, type skew, S-K-E-W. -E you can see there's two skew functions. One is skew.p, which brings back the skew distribution based on the population. And the other one is a non-population calculation, probably the sample. I'm gonna use that one. And select my values here from A2, control shift down arrow to A51, control backspace to go back to the top of my cell here and close that parentheses, press enter. And you can see here, my skew is pretty heavily weighted, positively. If I press the F9 key or, or just the delete key, this is a volatile function here, this ramp between function, we just recalculate this. You can see it is consistently close to one or above one. So that's highly positively skewed. Now, if I were to do the charting for this, let's make a chart for this. Click a cell here, go to insert, let's insert a bar chart, and select my data. What's my data range? A1 to A51, press enter. Let's go back up here. And you can see it doesn't really give you too much because it's charting each individual one. So let's group this. So a better way to do it is let's pull this into a pivot table and let it be grouped. So I will select this data here, go to insert, pivot table. Let's put the exist, put it on our particular cell here. Click OK. Bring my value down here. I don't need the formula column. I just want to count all the values there. So it, it counted everything, but, or it summed it up because they're values. So I'm going to right click, go summarize and make it a count and group this. These values, I'm going to group them in, in tens, I guess. Do group by tens, click OK, and now I have my tens. Now I can use this to create a chart. Let's create a pivot chart, and we'll click that one's fine. And I'll place it over here. And you can see here that we have a, if you drew a line here, you drew a line, it'd go down. So you would have our right tail, our positive. And if I Refresh everything here. I go to data, refresh all, refresh all, refresh all. You can see the skew change, but it's still pretty high at, at close to one or above one. 
you can see that it doesn't change too much. Now, that's an example of a positive skew. An example of a negative skew is I can just flip this around. Make this 40 to 60. Delete that. And bring this down here to here and make these from 10 to 29. And drag that down. That changes 10 to 29. Control home to go back up here. You can see the skew has changed from positive to negative. Now it's negative one. So the value is going to be close to um, negative one or above. If I refresh all, now you can see data that is negatively skewed. So if I click refresh all, you can see it pretty much stays consistent, except for that one, that we have the tail over to the left, negative. Now, what's an example of a zero skew? Now, I'm going to bring some data in and show you what an example of a zero skew. You probably don't find this very often, but maybe you'll find it there. Control V to paste, Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Now, if as I, re if I, if I refresh this, now you can see that the skew, this is 3.7627E to the negative 17. So you're going to bring that decimal place 17 places over. That's as close to zero as we can get, right? And you can see that this almost is a normal distribution. Let me see if I can group them not on tens, but maybe fives. You can see a better visual representation of that. So that comes kind of close to it. We have uh, this here. Maybe I can do twos. If I do it by twos, maybe we'll see a better representation. So if I did by twos now, you can see that this distribution is pretty symmetrical, right? We've got our skew function telling us that it is very close to zero. We also have our chart representation that tells us that. Now, how does this look for a normal normal distribution chart? Well, if we had a normal distribution, a good example would be IQ scores, right? So if you ever uh, notice the IQ scores, the mean is 100, the first standard deviation is about 15. What can we do for, how, how can we find out the skew of that? Well, what we can do is we can kind of pretend to chart something out, chart a normal distribution graph based on that. And so what we can do is use a random number generator. This is going to be using the rand function here. So I'm going to type rand and just press enter. So this just is basically a random number between 0 and 1. Let's make um, well, several of these. Uh, let's make it up to, I don't know, 100. So we've got 99, maybe one more. We've got a hundred of these. Let's go back up. And to create the normal distribution chart, I'm going to plug this random number into a function called norm.inv. So what it does is it returns the inverse of a normal cumulative distribution uh, based on a standard, a specific mean and standard deviation. That's why I have that there. So my probability is this function, because that's between 0 and 100. When you really think about it, between 0% and 100%, right? And comma, the mean, that value, I have to press F4 to lock it in there, because when I copy it down, that, this D2 will change to D3, D4, but I want to have B1 stay the same for that. Referencing that cell, my standard deviation is B2. Press F4 to also lock that in. Close parentheses, press Enter. Double click the fill handle to fill that down. And now I want to put this, let's put this as, I don't know, I'll just call this value two, right? So now I can chart this. So I'll go into insert. Let's select all this. Control shift down arrow and insert. When I insert, I'll go back up here, insert a column chart. You can see it did the same thing earlier. So what I probably need to do is create a pivot table for that again. Go under insert, pivot table, Let's put it into my worksheet here. Click OK and have my value here and my other value here. Make it a count. Let's not make it a sum. Let's make it a count and group this. Right click group. We'll group this by tens. That's OK. And now I can use this to create a pivot chart. I clicked in my pivot table here. Go to pivot chart. Click OK. And this is my example of a normal distribution, basically a chart that shows a normal distribution. 
Um, and if we want to look at the skew, types SKEW, tab to open parentheses, look at my values here, control shift down arrow, press control backspace to get back up to that cell, close my parentheses, press enter, and let's refresh this every once in a while. You can see that this is pretty close to zero, right? It doesn't go above one or it is not less than negative one. And that gets to the question of how do you interpret uh, the skew number? Um, so a rule of thumb, let's go back to my demo here, rule of thumb is what you need to f look at is some values that are highly skewed. So a rule of thumb is if the number, if your skew number is less than negative one, it could be negative two, negative three, ooh, or greater than one, uh, 1.01, 1.02, it would be considered highly skewed. Uh, the numbers, a moderately skewed number would be between negative one and negative point, negative 0 0.5, or a, a number between 0.5 and one. Data that's approximately symmetrical is going to be between uh, negative 0 0.5 and positive 0 0.5. Of course, perfect. This would fall under there, but it's as close to zero as possible. And you can see from the previous examples, we had numbers that were less than negative one and numbers that were greater than positive one. So that and that would fall under the highly skewed category. So the skew function is actually a fairly easy function to use when you really think about it. It only really takes one argument. And if you're looking at data, it just gives you a quick view whether or not your data is skewed, highly skewed or not highly skewed, or moderately or not moderately skewed. Uh, another way to kind of get this data, and if you also want to get like other descriptive statistics, is to use the data analysis feature in Excel. So you go under data, and under here we have data analysis. And in addition to providing your SKU numbers, it provides a lot more other things. So you click descriptive statistics, click OK. My input range is going to be E2 to, let's see, E101. I, it's going to be grouped by columns, just one column. There is no label, so I'm, I don't need to check that. I would put my output range. Let me put it back up here so, you can, so, we, so I can see it. Let's click on this. Scroll back up and let's put it over here and I want my summary statistics click OK now double click the column here to auto fit and you can see my my skewiness is over here right so it should have matched the old number the reason why I didn't match the old number was because this is um, this random number generator is uh, being done every time I do something here let's make that static control shift down arrow Control C to copy, and then Control V to paste, and we're going to paste it just as values, so it doesn't, so it sticks. And you can see that number is gone right now. That random number formula is gone. Press Escape. Let's do this over again. Data analysis. Click OK. It kept everything. My value is he here. My output range is going to be here, so it's going to overwrite that. Click OK. Click OK. And now you see my skew number here it's going to be the same as my SKU number there, right? It's because now this is static. So you can see that doing the data analysis command here, you, you have a whole bunch of other descriptive statistics in addition to skewness, but if you just wanted to check out your values for the SKU number, you can just use the SKU function here. So there you go, a little bit longer than I expected, but that's how you can use the skew function and the interpretation of what the skew number could mean and how it relates to a normal distribution. And also using the data analysis feature to get not only the skew number, but other descriptive statistics. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.